G'day, my fellow resin printing enthusiasts. Just wanted to make a quick video here today to let you know that the resin fume extractor system that I made about a year ago has been updated to be 100% parametric. What the hell does that mean? Uh, it basically means you can now customize this thing incredibly easily to your exact use case. So if you haven't got yourself a hobby license yet for Fusion 360, I highly recommend you do that. It's totally free. And then once you've got that, you can go download the Fusion file for this project. And what that's going to allow you to do here is really, really cool. So this is the parts as we know and love them. And basically we have our exit coupling. This is what would attach to the outside world. There's then our hose insert, which gets inserted into a hose and then has provisions for magnets around the edge here. We've then got our storage cap and finally the source coupling. Wasn't sure what to name it, but essentially you stick that on your printer or your wash and cure or your grow tent or whatever, you know, wherever the fumes are being generated, hence source, uh, you can attach this thing here. Now, where this gets super, super cool is you can come up to the modified drop down menu here, come down to change parameters, and now here are all the dimensions associated with these models and you can easily change them and update them on the fly. So one of the most obvious ones would be how many bolts or magnets you want to use. I've actually found after installing a bunch of these that having eight of these bolt holes is a little bit overkill. I would prefer to have just four. And what's cool is we can just come over here to our parameters, find the one that says bolts, change the expression, which is currently set to eight, change that to four. And there we go. Now we have four bolt holes. How cool is that? You can also, of course, change the amount of magnets. So for example, if I wanted to go up to 10, we could do that. And now all of these pieces have holes for 10 magnets, which is super cool. Although things do get a little bit weird uh, with the relationship between the bolt holes and the magnets. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but you probably don't need to change the amount of magnets anyway. Eight seems to work really well. Okay, never mind. I, uh, I came up with a quick fix here. So basically, uh, if you run into that situation where, say, you want to have like six magnets and four bolts, and you can see that that's creating some weirdness here, some overlap, what you can do is adjust the bolt offset parameter here. So basically, we could try, say, 10 degrees, and that's just going to push them all around by 10 degrees. And that didn't work, so let's try negative 10. We'll go the other way. And that seems to work. That would do the job. Probably not the most elegant fix, but it's something. It's better than nothing. <laughs> you can also, of course, adjust your tolerances. So for example, you can change the magnet depth and magnet diameter here. Right now, I've got a 0.6 millimeter tolerance built into these measurements. But if that was too loose, we could change this to say 10.2. And those magnet holes are all just going to shrink by that little bit. If this tube you're finding a little too tight to insert into the, the hose, uh, you can adjust that here with the tube outer. So for example, we might drop that down to 92. And you can see those all shrink down a little bit. You can also change stuff like the little flanges on this coupling piece. Wasn't sure what to call those either, but flanges seemed appropriate. You could change how many there are. You could change how big they are. Maybe we can make an odd number of them. You know, do all sorts of fun stuff like that really, really easily. The handle as well, even that's parametric, so we can, if we want to, change that completely. You've got basically how tall, wide, and thick it is. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to make it shorter, we could do that really, really easily. And so now we have a nice little square handle. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done a little bit more work to this, and now I think it is in a really, really cool state, and you're going to appreciate these uh, features. The first of which is, if you want to do embedded magnets, it's now really, really simple. So over on the left, you've got your different components. Right now, we're looking at the default source coupling. This is the one where you would just glue the magnets in here, straight down into the top. But if we hide that, and then unhide the one directly below it. This is source coupling embedded. And now this one, you can see those bolt holes, but you can't see the magnet holes. Uh, and the reason for that is they are subterranean. I don't have a better word for that. Uh, but if we go over to the inspect tool, turn on section analysis and choose this plane, uh, we can see our magnet holes in there, which is pretty cool. And now where it gets even cooler is if you come up to modify and you go into your parameters, 
Oh, and I've commented all the parameters too. So this should be pretty easy to understand if you spend a few minutes and just go through and read what they do, change the values, watch the models update, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. What's really cool is we have layers and layer height. These two settings let you really precisely control exactly how many layers you want to bury those magnets by. So right now, for example, it's set to two layers with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. When I'm printing functional parts like this, I like to print with a 0.3 millimeter layer height. You might like to print with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. So if I update that value, you can see here, this just got a little bit thinner because now it's two layers of 0.2 millimeters. And if I grab the measurement tool and we measure from this top face to that face under there, we can see 0.4 millimeters, which is of course two layers of 0.2 millimeters. So yeah, that's really cool. And of course, if you only wanted to overlay a single layer, although I wouldn't recommend that, but you can do it. And you can see that that just reduced itself to one layer thick. So I'm going to set this back to how I like it, which would be two layers at 0.3 millimeters. If you've never used Fusion before, once you've got the parameters all dialed in the way you like them for these files, you can literally just come over here to this parts tree, find the part you want to export, click on the little arrow to expand the submenus, come down to bodies, expand that menu, and then here you're going to find the model. So you just click on that and then right click on it and go save as mesh. And then that's going to bring up this little window over here. And what you want to do here is just make sure that this is set to high quality under refinement. STL, you could do 3MF, but I'm just going to do STL binary, hit OK. Uh, you can rename it if you want. You can choose where you want to save it. I'm going to stick this in my downloads folder, hit save, and we can see now there it is. And so if we drag that into Cura and we set my layer height to 0.3 and we slice this model, we should see that if we bring our layer preview down, that we have two layers on top of our magnet holes. So we can really clearly see our magnet holes here, which is awesome. And then that's our first layer on top. That's our second layer on top. And then there's no more. How cool is that? So you literally just pause your print when it gets to here, drop your magnet in, resume the print, and then it's going to keep going and bury that magnet in there. So that's how you do that. Okay, so we also have one last thing to show you, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, it was just a last minute idea that I thought would be very useful, and that is a tolerance test. So literally, you can print this before you print anything, and this will let you know how the fit is for your magnets and bolts. So for example, this is designed for 10 by two millimeter magnets, and you can absolutely change that. Now that this is using parameters, that, that would be super easy, but I like 10 by two millimeter magnets. And so my values here are 10.6 and 2.6, which should be a decent amount of tolerance that the magnets will fit. But I mean, we don't know. So what we can do is print just this little model with these settings here, see how the magnet fits. If it's too loose, we can drop this down, say to like 10.3 maybe. And then our magnet hole just gets a little bit slimmer there. So literally just set your tolerance how you want it and then export that STL in the same way we did the other one. Bring that tolerance test into Cura. And you could print this either way actually, because this piece prints with this face on the bed. So you might have some elephant footing around the entries to these magnet holes. Whereas this piece prints with this face on the bed. And so these edges wouldn't have an elephant's foot. So I'd probably print it like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll put a support blocker on this side because that should be able to bridge pretty well. And then we will only get supports in that hole. And yeah, as you can see, that's a super quick print. So I'm just going to run that off now. All right, let's have a look. 10 by two. Oh, okay. So that is too loose. And that's even with a little bit of elephant's footing. So I'm going to drop that down to probably like, I don't know, 10.3. Let's try 10.3. And so literally coming in here and changing this parameter from 10.6 down to 10.3 is going to adjust every single magnet hole on every single one of these models, which is super awesome. I'm going to change this one too, down to 2.3. Actually, the depth seemed good. I'm going to keep the depth at 2.6. But yeah, that diameter definitely needs, needs to be more snug. Let's have a look. Is this a better fit? Oh, that's perfect. I am noticing though, it is actually a little bit deep in there. So I probably would adjust that magnet depth parameter as well. So that's that. Uh, literally everything has been parametized. Is that the right word? So have a play with it. More than likely, you're not going to have to adjust anything anyway. But hey, the parameters are there if you want them. So yeah, have a play with it. Uh, if you do 
make your own custom version of this using these files, uh, please post a make to Maker World. I just set this up because I discovered that Maker World have this incredible points reward program that I'm trying to take advantage of to get myself a Bamboo Labs printer because I've got a great idea for a video involving the A1 Mini, uh, but if I can avoid paying for the printer outright, that would be best. Uh, <laughs> so I'm currently, I'm going hard to try and get as many points as I can on Maker World. So do me a favor, download the file on Maker World uh, and have a look at my other files too, because there might be some cool stuff in here that you'd like to download as well. Uh, I'm not asking you to go and download everything. Uh, as good as that would be, that would look bad. That would be gaming the system. Please don't do that. Just download stuff if you think it looks cool and you might actually print it. So yeah, download the files here post your makes here and uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you find this easier to adapt this system to your particular use case now. And uh, yeah, happy printing. Welcome to the very, very end of the video. This part is just for the fans of the channel where I try and convince you to join me on Patreon or buy me a coffee if you haven't already. My hope is that there is a level of support that you are able to offer on the Patreon, buy me a coffee or YouTube membership area that appropriately matches the level of value you feel you get out of the videos posted here on this channel. So if you can even spare just a couple of bucks, it truly helps out and it helps keep keep these videos rolling along and thanks to the wonderful support of everyone over there I don't have to I don't have to lose sleep over optimizing my videos to chase views uh, which allows me to be more experimental and more forgiving in the types of formats that I'm able to deliver here on this channel uh, and videos like this are a perfect example of that you know for the entirety of 2023 I never made a single video like this uh, and this is the kind of video that the channel was built on but that's the problem with chasing views is the moment you sort of figure out what it takes to make a video that gets a ton of views the videos very quickly lose a lot of practical value I feel uh, so being able to just make something like this that's just a quick Update and breakdown of a very technical niche thing um, is just, yeah, incredible. And, it, and is 100% made possible by the supporters on Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon. So I'm totally grateful to all of you. If you've already signed up, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't and you can spare a couple of bucks, please do check it out. And if you can spare 10 bucks for the STL tier, I have got some goodies for you this month for you 3D printers and tabletop gamers, which if you watch this channel, you, you probably are. So here in this little folder, chilling on the hill, March 2024, we have some incredible donations from some very talented artists in the community uh, who have rallied around this channel, donating their files for the month of March for members of the Once in a Six Side YouTube channel, whether that's on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, or YouTube, doesn't matter. If you join at the STL tier, you're going to get these files. And I'm just going to go through them one by one right now and just show you all the cool stuff that's in here. So from Artificers Mini, we have the Artificers Welcome Pack. And I'm actually, I'm very excited to tell you that the Artificers Welcome Pack has actually been donated in perpetuity. So if you're watching this video in the future, you're actually going to get these models regardless of whenever you sign up, which is so cool. I'm very grateful to Artificers Mini for that. That's just awesome. And so from Artificers Mini, we have a very dwarven themed release here, which is just so cool. We got the Titan Hill Beast Hunter, Fimbly, Son of Gimla, a Forge, Dwarven Gate, Dwarven Columns, and Dwarven Walls, so you can build yourself a nice Dwarven themed gaming table. And we've also got one of these things, the Arcane Watcher. So I don't play D&D, but for those of you who do, there you go, <laughs> you've got one of these things. Be sure to check out Artificers Mini on My Mini Factory. Next up from Dork Factory, we have a really, really cool little display piece. Um, this would be such a fun model to paint. 
This guy, he looks like he's under fire. He's taking cover amongst some rubble. Very, very cool. Thank you, Dork Factory. Dork Factory makes some really great stuff. You guys should check out Dork Factory. And then from the very talented Mike of Hive Mind Minis, we've actually got two packs of models, which is just so cool. Thank you, Mike. Uh, be sure to check out check out all of these artists on My Mini Factory. They all do really cool stuff. Hive Mind Minis is your more uh, grimdark future themed stuff. From what I've seen, he does some incredible tower proxies. I've printed a couple of his Tiburon tanks, and I did some of his droids last year in a video. Really, really great models. Um, but here we've got some more dwarves. Uh, these are the Droidkin Wardens, and this is a cool little modular pack of space dwarves. But the twist for Hive Mind Minis is that all of his stuff is droids. So you can see that these dwarves, rather than having little bearded dwarf heads, they have little droid heads, which is super cool, super cute. And then we also have the Droidkin Warden Champion. So there we go. That's your a big puppet dwarf robot man. <laughs> So thank you, Hive Mind Minis. Really, really cool models. We got another from M3D Sion. We had a, a great dwarf model from M3D Sion last month, and this month we have this cool thing. The what is this? The Tor Toran Magma Elementalist. How cool is that? Thank you, M3D Sion. And returning again for March is Moid with the Iron Legionaries. Uh, this is incredible. I, look at this pack. This is a troop builder for your space marines. And it's bloody awesome. I'm, I'm, man, thank you, Moid. So cool. I always love seeing different and unique takes on the uh, the classic space marine. And this, is, this looks to be quite a sharp take. Thank you, Moid. From Neoteric Miniatures, and I hope I'm saying that right, we have the Strider Scout Frame. Uh, and these are so cool. Look at them. Look how cool they are. Definitely a tau themed mecha robot style thing going on here. And goddamn, they're just so cool. So dynamic to the posing. Um, yeah, really, really fun model. Thank you, Neoteric Miniatures. Definitely check out their stuff. There's a bunch of great instructions. Oh, I love that. That is such a nice attention to detail. And look at all these cool options. This is so great. Thank you, Neoteric Miniatures, for this. This is ah, amazing. This looks like so much fun. And from Stoneforge, we have a little, where is it? Uh, the Venom Clan Spitter, which is a really cool, fun little model. Thank you, Stoneforge. Very nice. And then finally, from Synergy Studio, we have another tank. So last month, we had a cool tank from Synergy, and now we got another one. So thank you, Synergy. You're fucking awesome. Really appreciate these models. And uh, something to note as well about Synergy is the files he donated last month have actually been contributed toward the Once in a Six Side welcome pack. So they're going to be available in perpetuity for all time for anyone who signs up ever at any point. You're going to get those files. And not only that, you're also going to get these files in perpetuity. So this tank is also going toward the welcome pack. And in talking with Synergy, it sounds like this might be an ongoing thing. So thank you so much, Synergy. Really appreciate the value that you're adding to the member area. Uh, all of the artists here, thank you so much. I'm going to try and print up as much of these models as I can this month for some videos that I'm working on. It's going to be super fun. Speaking of the welcome pack, uh, I recently finished pre-supporting all of the plain tabletop gaming bases. So now they all come pre-supported for resin. You've got your lychee files. Uh, I even put together a little PDF guide with some uh, print recommendations. And so there it is. That will of course also be available in perpetuity for anyone who joins at any point in time. You're gonna get this as well as some other pieces of terrain that I've designed in a few odds and ends. All right, so thanks for hearing me out. If you're unable to join today, that's totally fine. Maybe at some point in the future you will be able to, but for now, at the very least, check out these artists, Artificers Mini, Dog Factory, Hive Mind Minis, M3D Sion, Moid, Neoteric Miniatures, Stoneforge, and Synergy. You know, go check out their stuff. See if they have anything that you like. Keep them in mind. Maybe buy something from them that you might fancy, you know.